Uh, you're live with Eric and Noah. Hey, Eric and Noah. How are you guys doing? Hey, um, I, I'm sitting with no illusions in front of a live studio audience on an amazing day in Austin, Texas. I am, I'm pretty thrilled, man. How about yourself? That sounds great. Uh, just sitting here in a snowy day in a snowed in house with my kids. They were just playing outside. So I was listening right. to you guys' show. Long time listener, first time caller. Hey, how about that? Hey, hey, cheers. <laughs> okay. The, so, the, there are other shows that actually uh, have a, have something that they use instead of saying long time listener, first time caller. I think uh, we got to figure one out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I did call into a, uh, one of your other shows you have uh, uh, there in Austin. I called into a Parenting Beyond Belief. Oh, uh, hey. A few weeks back. It's a, it's a, it's a great show. I, I think they're going to be helping a lot of people. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, what would you want to call in about today? All right. So I, uh, I've actually done a little bit of research a little bit into the, uh, into the, uh, the word usage and, and language uh, uh, of faith. And uh, uh, just to refresh my memory, what was that definition you used about, about five, ten minutes ago that you were just talking oh, to the previous caller about? Belief without evidence. Okay. Um, for me, it would be more of um, uh, a belief regardless of evidence. Mm -hmm. Because you may have a faith-based position in something, and there could possibly be evidence to support it, but it doesn't really matter. You're going to believe it anyway. You know, I don't know. I don't know. In light of evidence um, and the ability to interpret that evidence, um, I, I actually kind of side with, uh, with Matt Dillahunty's uh, approach that we don't choose the things we believe. We believe the things we do because that is what we've come to with the tools that we have, right, at our disposal. We, we use the best tools we right. have to decipher the world around us. And if they're flawed tools, then you're prob you may get to a flawed conclusion. But if you're saying, you know, that you would believe in light of having learned that it's false, um, I think you'd be tricking yourself, but I don't think you'd actually believe well, I think I, I, you know, I, I lean towards, and I actually think that's a good correction. I, you know, not to be too uh, combative with you here. We we can we can go to fisticuffs if we have to. Oh, dude, this. you know um, what? Atheist experience. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna call them out. Uh, I I have not seen that. You want to disagree? You can disagree. What's up? Hit all right, me. all right. Let's so, go. No, I, I I think I I I agree with Mark, and it might seem like a small correction here to say, you know, because when you say faith without evidence. Um, if you use that term to a person with faith, to a religious person, um, they'll they'll be able to dismiss this by saying, "No, no, no! I have evidence. Look at all my evidence." You know, their evidence mm -hmm. will be the Bible, and their evidence will be their cousin who was uh, the really, you know, really on the down and outs and was on meth and got off of it because of Jesus, right? Um, and then you know, and you can say, "Well, here's all this evidence to go against it." But I, I think I think that's right, and I honestly think that um, belief. Dis, you know, despite the evidence, as Mark phrased it, is an agreement or is a definition that the religious people would largely agree with, right? Like that hmm. would be a harder one to, ta to attack than to say belief without evidence. Um, but you can say, like, and, and I, again, I think most religious people would agree that if you say to them, you know, okay, if I provided you evidence X, Y, and Z against your religion, would you stop believing in God? They'll usually say no, you know, if they're going to be honest. Yeah, enough people. You right. know what? That's actually a really good point. Yeah, I like okay. that a lot, Mark. Okay, and you know what? Also, that would that would include bad evidence. You could talk about yeah, right. what good right. and bad evidence is. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, all right. Or it could also mean with uh, no evidence at all. Yeah. Uh, either way. Yeah, Mark. Or against. Mark, no, I'm on board. I think y'all convinced me. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue okay. to stew on it a bit, uh, but that sounds pretty damn good. Okay. Cheers. And, and hey, sorry well, about uh, your call. What the other? No, uh, oh yeah, I know. Well, I'm proud of them anyway. They 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 did a good job, even though. They <laughs> hey, I'm a I'm a Jack Bars <laughs> fan. I can't talk. <laughs> but uh, also something the other uh, caller was talking about uh, uh, between trust and faith. I yeah. um, uh, uh, I actually did a little essay on this the uh, the difference between trust and faith. Um, this is kind of where my uh, research came in and everything like that. I, I learned that uh, faith, when somebody says, 
I have faith in X, Y, and Z. They are more or less making a claim of knowledge. You know, I have faith in God. They are claiming that, you know, uh, I have faith that God exists. Mm-hmm. So, so um, how, how would you just how would you make that distinct and separate from confidence or a, a confidence level? Right, right. Well, the difference between trust and faith has to come from um, uh, what is this knowledge based on? So, um, and uh, through the, well, I'm, I'll shorten this down a little bit, but uh, through the course of my research, I found out that uh, trust is more commonly associated with uh, the learning, the uh, 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 the empirical knowledge that we have about any kind of subject where faith is involved more with the emotional appeals mm-hmm. and the, the feelings that we have about it. So when it comes to the difference between trust and, trust and faith, uh, faith is more of an emotional appeal to a claim of knowledge while trust is more of an intellectual claim towards knowledge. That makes a lot of sense. I think, you know, I think religious people get a lot of mileage out of the fact that there are multiple different definitions of the word faith that we use in everyday language, right? Like, so when I say I have faith in my wife, right, that's a a very different claim than saying I have faith in God. If I walked in to my bedroom tomorrow and my wife is stooping the uh, the, the pool guy, I no longer have faith in my wife, right? Um, But like uh, like you're saying, if if you're defining faith as uh, belief in spite of evidence, then obviously we're talking about a completely different thing there. Well, no, not in spite regardless. Right. Right. Yeah. So there, there, there could be evidence supporting you. There could be evidence against you. There might not be any evidence at all Mm -hmm. either way, but, um, uh, you still have that emotional because, well, let's face the facts. Human beings are emotional creatures. Mm -hmm. 90, 95% of the decisions we make every day are based on how we feel about it. Not any kind of critical thinking. And, you know, so with, in light of those facts, that uh, I'm an atheist and I have no problem saying that I have faith in things. The difference is I have faith in the things that are based in reality. Mm-hmm. I don't have any problem saying I have faith in my wife. I don't have any problem saying I have faith in humanity. I don't have any problem saying uh, I have faith my brace will work next time I stop at a stoplight. Mm-hmm. See, I, I still think that, I mean, while your definition, I, all of those definitions, I, I want to go over them and think about them because my initial reaction is, does that work all of the time? In what situations does that work? Um, and in those definitions that you gave, I think that if you agreed with somebody that you were talking to on those definitions to better understand the conversation that you were having, fantastic. But I would still have a problem with you saying that you have faith generally if they don't know your definitions, you know, and it, I, I just, I don't want to muddy the water any yeah, more than I have that. to, you know? Yeah. I understand that. It is quite the loaded term. It's, you know, best avoided <laughs> when possible. But yeah. again, even even by your definition, when you say, you know, uh, uh, if faith is is belief regardless of evidence, then you don't have faith that your brakes are going to work the next time, right? Because all it would take is your brakes not working next time, and that faith is crushed, right? So all you need is one piece of evidence, and you're willing to overthrow that. Um, so again, I think, you know, just like many words, uh, faith has multiple meanings, multiple usages and stuff. And I think religious people try to uh, to muddy those waters intentionally by you know, conflating those various usages. So yeah. again, when I have, when I say I have faith in my wife, what I'm saying is based on prior behavior, I trust that this is, you know, that she, she's going to continue to be uh, uh, faithful to me. And, and you know, uh, again, like I said, it's just, you know, it's just there in the dictionary, there's a parenthesis one and there's a parenthesis two there. And when, whenever we start melding those two together, it's, it's an intentional confusion. But I appreciate the conversation. Thank you for calling in. I, I, I think yeah, that definitely. that was very well timed on the heels of the last call. Yeah, right, right. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much for taking my call. You guys have a great night. You too. Thank you. Yeah, enjoy all that lovely Indiana weather. <laughs>